So I'd like to start by acknowledging that I'm uh, zooming in from the lands of the Awabakal people. Uh, I want to pay my respects to all elders and ancestors past and present and acknowledge that this land always was and always will be Aboriginal land. So as I said, my name's Fox. I use they, them pronouns exclusively. Uh, I also identify as a queer person and also as a bisexual person. So I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in a minute. I also just wanna say that uh, I'm a performing artist, I'm an events producer, but I'm also a naturopath uh, working with natural therapies, natural wellbeing, and I'm also a public health professional. So I work for the state health department and I'm also studying uh, public health at university at the moment. I'm 31 years old. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of who I am in a nutshell, but I'd like to now go into just a little bit of history because I think it's quite important uh, when we're thinking about sort of the LGBTQIA plus community and our history, because the realities that we see today are really different to the realities that we saw previously. So uh, are some of you familiar with Mardi Gras, heard about Mardi Gras parade before and the, the party up in Sydney? Yep. So that actually started out as a protest in 1978, where uh, oh. uh, people, members of the LGBT community were protesting against poor standards of treatment. Uh, and I think it's important to remember that when we're thinking about where we're at at a party now, what was once upon a time actually a protest, uh, you know, with police and violence and things like that. It's also only been in the last 31 years that the World Health Organization or WHO have removed homosexuality from the classification as disease. So literally 32 years ago, to be a homosexual was considered to be uh, an unwell person, to be a diseased person. And then here in Australia, so-called Australia, homosexuality was only decriminalized in 1997 in Tasmania. So up until 1997, you could actually be fined or even go to jail if you were found to be a, a gay person, a lesbian person or any of those things. And I find that really shocking. And the last little thing I'm gonna mention about history before I start talking a bit more about myself is that for trans people and gender non-conforming people, uh, in the DSM, which is kind of like this big textbook that psychologists and psychiatrists use to uh, diagnose people, being transgender was actually considered to be a mental disorder and it was called gender identity disorder. And it was only in 2013 that that was changed to dysphoria. So uh, I'm just saying all that because I think it really indicates how far we've come, um, but also how recently our history has been changing. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about myself now and my experience with my identity and the process that I've been on. So I'm AFAB, which means that I was assigned female at birth. And before I was born, my mother had a real desire to have a little girl that she wanted to dress up and take shopping and things like that. And admittedly, I love dressing up. I love going shopping but I never really felt like that was the full capacity of my identity as a girl or as a young woman. Um, I was also really interested in like climbing trees, going fishing. Even when I was like playing role play games and things like that, I would always take on male characters. Um, I'd always wanna play like the dad or the brother and things like that. And I was the only girl in the football team. Uh, I used to have like an alter ego that was a male character and used to like fantasize about how when I grew up I could hide my gender identity and pretend to be a boy or, or, or be perceived as a man and all of these on reflection I'm realizing that those were actually really important parts of of me as a child and I felt really grateful that my family always let me be sort of a tomboy and allowed me to sort of explore those parts of my gender without putting too much pressure onto me um, to conform to a certain type of gender identity. And, and I acknowledge that that's not the case for everyone, but I was really fortunate that that was the case for me. So then as I got a bit older, became a teenager more around the age of you folks there, uh, that's when I started dating. 
And I was dating people of all different genders and, and kind of didn't think too much about it, that it was unusual or, or uncommon to be interested in both boys and girls and, and possibly people of other genders, but we just didn't really know it at the time. So that was sort of the beginning of my bisexual identity. Uh, however, there was a bit of discrimination that I experienced with people uh, kind of judging me for my bisexuality. I had lesbians sort of saying that I wasn't gay enough and I had straight people sort of going, oh, well, you're not really straight and things like that. And it was, it was a very confusing time for me and made me really question whether or not I was gay, whether I was bisexual, like who was I and, and what was I? It was, it was a very confusing time. Um, my fam I had family members as well making comments about not wanting me to be a lesbian. I believe that that came from a place of them hoping that um, or believing that lesbians couldn't start families and believing that if I was a lesbian, then I wouldn't be able to have children, for example. But we know that there are lots of amazing lesbian parents out there and um, gender non-conforming parents who are raising beautiful families and amazing children. So, but that really affected me as a child and as, as a young person and was something that really influenced the way that I uh, navigated my own identity in the world and, and caused a lot of shame, which, which brought me back into my shell a little bit. Um, it was around the same time that I was sort of exploring um, how I presented myself with my clothes, being more masculine and more feminine. I was also experimenting with my body hair, allowing body hair to grow out, even though people were really sort of uh, confused and sometimes even disgusted that I wasn't doing things like plucking my monobrow or shaving my armpits, but it felt really good to me. And I realized that these were sort of the beginnings and stirrings of like gender euphoria for me as a non-binary and gender non-conforming person. So I left high school and I was really interested in theatre and performances and I, I still didn't really quite commit to my bisexual identity and I didn't really consider myself to be gender non-conforming or non-binary. Non Those words actually didn't even really exist when I was in my early 20s. Um, you were sort of gay or straight, or if you were bisexual, you were just waiting to pick a side. Um, so a lot's changed since then in the last 10 or 11 years. Uh, where I really found myself though, was in the drag community um, with drag queens and drag kings and drag things. Uh, so this was a space where gender was really celebrated in all of its forms. So anyone could get up on stage and be anything and be totally celebrated for it. And that's where I found my people, really. Uh, long before I came out as non-binary, I changed my name to Fox. My birth name is Kara. Um, some people consider their birth name to be a dead name and don't like to be referred to as that, but it's not a dead name for me. It was more so that Fox helped me sit within myself and feel more like myself because I just never felt like Kara, whereas Fox always felt like more of a gender neutral name, a little bit masculine, a little bit feminine. But I used to also hate it when people called me Foxy because that felt too feminine. Um, but then I did eventually meet some people who were gender non-conforming and non-binary who used they, them pronouns. And it was meeting these people that helped me to acknowledge those parts of myself. And because I could see it happening around me, in people around me, I went, you know what? Maybe that's who I am as well. So I didn't come out as non-binary until I was 25 years old. And I was using they, them, and he, him pronouns at the time. I felt really validated by they, them, and he, him pronouns and really invalidated by she, her pronouns because I felt a bit trapped by this concept of femininity or the way that people perceived me to be feminine. Um, I didn't really feel like a man or a woman. I felt like a combination of both, but also neither. There were some days that I'd feel more masculine. There were some days that I felt more feminine. But a lot of the time I just felt like a human that was just in the world and didn't really uh, want to conform to any of the stereotypes of what it was to be a woman or a man. I just wanted to be a person and I didn't really feel comfortable being perceived in a gender outside of that. So 
I got a lot of social validation within that drag community from people who were also non-binary, people who were gender non-conforming. And that social validation was really euphoric for me and really helped me to, to feel like my best self. I did get a bit of backlash, um, especially from the male gay community regarding using male pronouns because they were sort of saying, oh, well, you're not a man you don't have a, a male experience. And, and I think that that sort of response came from ignorance and from not really knowing a lot of gender non-conforming people and not realising that our identity and our gender is a construct and we are actually whoever we want to be and however we perceive ourselves. And that someone's identity as a man or a woman isn't actually impacted or affected by someone who is trans because as long as that person knows who they are, they shouldn't feel offended or upset that someone else is saying, oh, well, that's kind of who I am as well. But now I'm at a point where um, I realise that I don't need the validation as much from everyone. Uh, there are always going to be people who don't acknowledge me for the gender I am and, and don't quite understand it my pronouns and I'm at a point now where that's okay with me because I know who I am and the people who know me and who love me are going to make an effort to validate me in in that gender identity as well. So now at 31, nearly 32, I feel really comfortable in my non-binary identity. I don't feel like um, I need to use she, her or he, him pronouns and that they, them pronouns are the most sort of comfortable and effective pronouns for me. And this doesn't mean that my gender isn't going to change or develop or adapt as I get older or as things change and develop and adapt in my life. It just means that this is where I am now. Um, I'm at a point in my life where I've come out to my family and I'm really supported by them, even though uh, sometimes they misgender me, they really make the effort and I really commend them to make the effort. When people misgender me, it, it used to be really painful um, and really, really difficult to hear. But as I've sort of spent more time with myself and, and acknowledging who I am, I've let go of a lot of that pain because I've sort of realised that if I got upset every single time someone misgendered me, I, I would have a very sort of sad life and I, I would feel upset a lot of the time. So my um, understanding of myself is more important than other people's understanding of me. Um, I'm not on hormones. I'm not taking testosterone. I have been through, uh, I have had appointments to talk about it, but I've decided that for my uh, physical uh, well-being due to some medical things in my life and in my family history, it's just not uh, totally safe or appropriate for me to take testosterone right now. And that's fine. Like I can still be who I am with, without taking hormones. And, and I do hope that there is a time in my future that I can have a low dose of hormones, but also acknowledge that if that's not right for me, then I can stop taking them as well. It, it's totally fine. Um, because I feel socially validated. There, there's lots of different kinds of affirmations that we can have as gender non-conforming and non-binary trans people. Uh, that includes social affirmation, which I've spoken about a lot today because that's really valid for my experience. However, there's also emotional validation, psychological validation, which can come from feeling supported by your community, by your friends and family, and also through seeing um, psychological professionals, if that's something that needs to happen. Uh, there's physical affirmation, which includes dressing to, this, to the way that you want to dress, whether that be in a really masculine way or a really feminine way or a way that doesn't define any gender. Uh, there's cosmetic affirmation. So that's haircuts and makeup and um, things like that. There's also medical affirmation, which can include surgeries, uh, but those things are not essential. You know, none of them are essential to feel validated within your identity and your gender identity. I think that the most important thing to remember is just to do what makes you feel happy, you know, and, and lean into being who makes you feel happy. So if you 
I think that there's a lot of focus on dysphoria, as I mentioned earlier in the DSM, of, oh, I don't feel like myself. I don't feel like my gender. And, and that's how they just sort of define transness. But there's a movement at the moment which is suggesting that euphoria should actually define gender and transness. So if, if a person, for example, feels euphoric, dressing in a certain way that is different from the gender that they were assigned at birth, then that should be the indicator of whether someone is trans, not whether they feel depressed or deficient, but what actually makes them feel good. And if you're in this situation where you're trying to work things out and you're not sure where you're at, I think it's really valuable to really lean into what makes you feel good and also find people who can validate you and support you and just know that identity changes, everything changes. It's nothing is stuck or cemented in stone. And if who you are today is different to who you feel like being tomorrow, that's okay. You just got to do whatever brings you the most joy, even if that takes a whole lifetime to find it. Yes, and that's me. So <laughs> 